is something about sin that will wear you and it will tear you. It will stain you and it will pain you. Sin will sift you like wheat. Sin carries a heavy load and it carries a heavy weight. Sin will burden you down. But Jesus had extended an invitation to you to come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. If you are torn and under the guilt of sin, you need to turn your feet in this direction. He said, come unto me, all ye that are labor, laboring and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Preach God, I'm talking about the gospel is the power of God. The power to transform your life. The power that can make you a new creature in Christ Jesus. The power that can make you a new man and a new woman in Christ Jesus. You want to know why? Because the word of God in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ Jesus, and he's talking about male or female, he said he is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. Now look what God has waiting for you. God's got a new life for you. God's got a new walk and a new talk for you. But he's saying you've got to come to me. He wants to transform your life and transform your mind and give you a new way of thinking and a new way of walking and a new way of talking. The gospel is the power of God to everyone that believes. Now the word of God says he that cometh to God he that approaches God must believe. You must believe that God is a rewarder of them that seek him. God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You've got to believe. See, this is something that has to be done with the heart. And it has to be done in faith. For the word of God states in Romans 10 and 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. God gives us a promise, but you have to believe it in your heart. The 10th verse says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation so you can receive the salvation of your soul simply by believing the finished work that was wrought at Calvary God has laid the foundation and he's already opened up the way this is not something that you have to pay for it's not something that you have to work for the debt has already been marked paid in full at Calvary it is a gift from God. The word of God states that God has loved the world so much until the love of God has motivated God to give and it's motivated him to give his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him, the son of God, would not perish but would have everlasting life. So you need to come and receive this precious gift that God has wrought today through Jesus Christ, his son. And it's not something that you pay for. It is an unmerited favor. It's an undeserved favor. There are people that feel like it's something they have to do to obtain it. But it's already been marked, paid in full. In Ephesians 2 and 8, the Bible tells us, For by grace are ye saved, through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. It's nothing that you can do of yourself to merit it. It's a gift. And any time someone gives you a gift that has already been paid for, they're not asking you to pay them for it. They're asking you to receive it. God is asking you to receive something that has already been taken care of. It's a gift to you. He loved you so much until he gave his son to die. His son was the prophet.
price. He was the price that purchased us through his death. The blood of Jesus was the price that was paid. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So this is something that God wants you to receive. John 1 and 12 tells us, as many as received him, to them gave he power. Power to become the sons of God. God gives that power for us to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. God gives us enablement to become the sons of God. Power to walk right, power to live right, power to talk right, power over sin, power over lying and conniving, power over sin, and God gives that power. I'm talking about the gospel is the power of God. The gospel is that enablement that God has given us to live victorious over sin. Paul is saying, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. I think about how in creation, in the beginning, how God created the heavens and the earth and everything was in divine order. And everything was set like God wanted it. And then he set man in the garden. And man sinned. Man sinned and disobeyed God and fell from a place in God and marred God's plans for his life. But I am so glad that God did not leave man in that fallen state. But I am so glad that God prepared a sacrifice. God prepared the mediator, which is Jesus Christ, the go-between, between man and God. God prepared it for man to atone for the sins of fallen mankind to bring man back to God. I am so glad at Calvary when Jesus hung, bled, and died. I am so glad that he made an open show of the devil and there the devil was stripped of his power and there the devil was stripped of his influence and Jesus said all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth I am so glad that he died for my sins and yours I am so glad that he rose for our justification and I am so glad when he got up he got up with power in his hand and I am so glad that he has given us that power my God, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead, it has quickened our mortal bodies. Amen. That is the enablement that God has given the child of God to walk and to live right before him. I'm talking about the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. 1 Corinthians 2 and 4, in my speech and my preaching, was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration and of the spirit and of power. We need the power of God in the day and the time that we live in. We need the demonstration of the spirit of God in times that we live in on today, in a vast time when sin is rampant. In a time when sin is stalking like a natural man. And you've never seen so many people losing their minds and going crazy and committing suicide as you see in the time that we live in even now. And many don't even know why they're going crazy. They don't know what it is on them. They don't know what it is that has captivated their minds. But those of us that are saved and do know Jesus as our personal Savior, we do know what is going on. We know that we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. We're wrestling against principalities. We're wrestling against spiritual wickedness in high places. We're wrestling against the forces and the rulers of the darkness of this world. And they are captivating the minds of so many 
of people in the world and people are really sinning as never before and committing crimes as never before because the enemy is on the rage and he is on the rampage. This is the end time. These are the last and evil days. And you know, this has been the L. Bethel Open Door Broadcast with Evangelist Nunda Johnson.